Hello again there, my friends. How's it going today? Well, I just got done with the day of work, and uh, before I leave, I wanted to make a just a quick video before my brain is drained. You know, sometimes I get home and I have these ideas that I want to make a video about. I might have all these notes and thoughts in my head, and I'm just too tired, or just can't muster the energy for it. But why do I make videos? Some people may call it self-aggrandizement or, you know, uh, my ego wanting to share my ideas. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. I, I really don't analyze it too much anymore because it's been consistent for me for the last, you know, 12 years talking about stuff on YouTube. So it's just part of my life. It's like drinking a cup of coffee or a nightcap. It's just a video that I make for YouTube. And a lot of them are just me rambling. A lot of them are notes that I've taken and some of them I've read various, you know, stories or papers. But really it comes down to sharing ideas with other people with the hopes that somebody else gains something from it. In other words, my intention here isn't so much to gain anything for myself because I'm not going to get much by just talking about a random philosophy video. But uh I just wanted to note that I don't even really know why I still make videos. I feel like perhaps, as I've said before, it's like a journal for me and a way for me to kind of share share my thoughts in order for me to go back and look at them maybe. And uh, where was I at any one point in time in my mind, in my mindset? Maybe I don't want to know. You know, it's funny, history is easy to kind of skew and create our own reality about what happened at what time, but when you go back and you can watch your thoughts, you know, it's uh, it's like, oh, I was talking about that. Oh, I don't believe that anymore. I don't think that. And therefore, I've used it as a way to gauge whether the things that I share on YouTube endure time. In other words, I try to talk about timeless things. That's why I tend to avoid modern you know, discussions about politics or things in the news today. But anyhow, today I was listening, I usually listen to podcasts or lectures on uh, my headphones while I'm at work. And I've been listening to a lot of Terrence McKenna discussions and uh, Manly P. Hall lectures. But then I came across this, I downloaded a lot of files, torrent files, about eight years ago when I was really into like mysticism and philosophy I downloaded everything I could find on in, a, in, a, in torrents like the entire Alan Watts collection mechanic collection and this one called the, um, the Great Courses series and uh, it's just a bunch of lectures by various lecturers uh, dealing with different philosophers or historians or things that happened whatever it may be but the one I was listening to today was probably, it's like a 12 or 15 part lecture series that is about Thoreau. And uh, Thoreau was uh, Henry David Thoreau. He was very much influenced by Ralph Waldo Emerson. So it's about Thoreau and Emerson. And um, that's my son's name, by the way. Uh, I, won't even, I won't get into that story. Uh, anyway. See how easily I get distracted. But he's talking about how, you know, Thoreau had this philosophy on life and how these philosophies can change over time. And one particular part of the recording talked about how he'd said if he was hungry enough, you know, he'd eat a fried rat. It's not that bad. But he was a vegetarian at the same time. And what they were doing was kind of picking apart this, he said, if I needed to. And with many of these old philosophers and writers that have passed away long ago, all you can do is read and try to determine what they meant. And for a vegetarian to say he would eat a fried rat if he needed to, meant that he understood that it's circumstantial. And each situation that arises, we need to deal with differently. And it's very difficult to build a system of ethics and have integrity that is, you know, unflappable, untenable, or you can't can't change 
you know, how I feel, this is how I feel, this is how I'm always going to act, and I'm never going to change my way of being because these are my ethics, these are my values, these are my morals. And um, it's a difficult topic because part of me says I agree with this. Like, we need ethics and morals that we can stand by and consistently uphold. I have a few of my own. You know, one of them is, for example, I don't lie or cheat or steal. But what if I was in a situation where I had to steal? What if I was in a situation where I had to lie? Of course I would. And what do I mean by have to? I mean that by a small lie, you can get yourself out of, say, you know, years in prison for something you didn't do. It, it, I could come up with a thousand stories, but you all know where I'm, what I'm getting at. Uh, just like the fried rat. You know, you could be a vegetarian, but if you're starving and all you have to eat is meat, you can break your ethic code. It's important that you eat so you can live and keep your brain alive. Anybody who would rather let their body die because their morals tell them not to eat meat, say if meat's already available, that's a difficult one, you know. But after that lecture was over and only, you know, just a few minutes ago, it was the funniest thing. My brother texted me and he mentioned something about, a, a, he was listening to this philosopher and he was talking about how you have options in situations. And we got to this little text discussion about how in specific situations you have the option to act a certain way or to act a different way, which is pretty universal. Uh, the example he gave was if somebody broke into your house, you could either confront them or you could leave. And of course I said, I, I wouldn't leave because my values are based on not just my own protection of my own dwelling, but the historical, uh, the historical ethics surrounding defending your own property, defending your own territory. And uh, it's a weird one too, because there may be a situation where I would leave. Of course, if I had my son in a back room and somebody came busting in my door and I could escape to protect my kids, I probably would. Um, so there are circumstances. There's no absolutes is what I'm getting at. Life doesn't have to be so cut and dry, black and white. This is what it is and this is how I'm always going to be and this is how society is. And if we can see ourselves as being flexible that way, I think it's very important that we realize that everyone else around us is just as apt to change or to be flexible on their views and morals. And if we took this to heart and we realized, say, you're a liberal and you hate conservatives, you think all conservatives are just bad people. If you get out there and talk to some, you find they're not. <laughs> the same way that somebody who's conservative may say all the liberals are just morons. Well. The reason why it seems that way is because there's a lot of good liberals that just don't brag about being a liberal or don't make it that much of a big deal. Um, another one would be religions. The way that Christians, you know, may think that somebody from a different religion, you know, from Islam, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, is a bad person and their ethics are poor. And then you get to meet somebody and you say, wow, you know, we have a lot more in common than I thought. And I think one of the most important things we can do as humans right now, especially in history, is to listen to each other and stop being such little bitches about everything and stop making everything about victimhood and, you know, it's just become so absurd. It's like you say the wrong thing and, and people feel like you're personally attacking them. Sometimes a personal attack is warranted, but often people resort to it just because it's all they have left instead of really talking about a topic at hand. And we get so stuck in our ways of thinking a certain way that we're resistant to change, we're resistant to new ideas. <sighs> Life is funny, isn't it? Anyway, I guess I just wanted to get that thought off my chest about how morals and values can change depending on circumstance. I can only go so far on that because I'm tired and I need to get home. And uh, maybe I'll make another another uh, podcast this evening. I've got a couple new ones uploaded um, on the 15 minute free thinking podcast. I don't know if the link will be in the description, but you can find it somewhere on my channel. And uh, other than that, thank you to my patrons. Thanks to my subscribers. 
Thank you for leaving a comment, explaining your thoughts on philosophy. Remember, this is all coming from the brain of one dude who's scattered at the end of a workday. It's hard for me to organize everything I want to say when I don't have a plan or an itinerary for a video. And maybe that's not the best way to do it. But sometimes something comes out that ah, I needed to remember that. In this particular video, maybe not so much. But with that said, I'll see you next time. Peace.